All right, welcome to chapter three, link aggregation. This should be a very short chapter, so it won't be the 40 or 50 minute video like normal, because <clears throat> there's not a whole lot involved in this. Ah, so I'm sorry, I have the screen issues. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what link aggregation is and then how to configure it, and really that's it. All right, so don't worry about that. Let's talk about link aggregation. So. Basically, you've got an access switch, and it's a 24-port switch, and there's 20 users that are actually there that day, and they're all hammering it. So you got 20 users at 100 megabits per second. So that's 2,000 total megabits per second that need to cross this link to get to the core switch to get to the email server and the other servers that you have. <clears throat> so if that link is just a single... 100 megabit link and you got 2,000 megabits trying to get into it you've just taken your highway and placed it to pointed it to a dirt road so that's obviously bad you don't want that so even if you use a port on the side and use a GBIC you're only getting one gigabit port so you don't have one gig so what we need to do is we need to take several ports two or more and we need to group them together to function as one to load balance across all those ports and that's what Cisco refers to as Ether Channel. So that's all we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking two or more ports and grouping them to function as one um, so we can make several gigabit links across here and that way all of our users can be at max bandwidth or at whatever the max bandwidth the switch will allow through it. So in most businesses you go to all their switches um, are typically used in Ether Channel to connect to the other switches. Um, we typically, when we buy switches, you get two or four ports on the right that are gigabit ports, and we use those gigabit ports to connect to other switches, um, and that way we can have you know full bandwidth for the, the regular users that are on the 100 ports. That's why uh, almost every business you go to still has 100 megabit speed ports uh, on their switches because if you had 1,000 speed, uh, imagine if you had a 24 port switch at 1,000 speed and 20 users were active, you would need 20,000 megabits per second between switches. Well, the only way you're going to get that is if you do fiber connection between your switches. And there's not a whole lot of you know, small and medium businesses that do fiber between switches. So 100 megabit speed is typically adequate. So that's what we're going to talk about, how to, how to combine these uh, ports together. All right, so most configurations are done on the Ether channel interface. Um, and that way, once they're done, you know, it, it's very consistent. It relies on existing switch ports, so you don't have to buy anything extra. There's no upgrades to your switch. Your switches out of the box support two different modes of Ether channel. Um, it load balances between the links. Um, it's viewed as a single link through spanning tree, so you don't have to worry about spanning tree issues. Um, and obviously, it provides redundancy. You know, if one of the ports goes down, the channel still stays up. So that's kind of nice. All right. So there are some issues with implementing Ether Channel. Uh, the first off, the interfaces cannot be mixed. You can't have you know 100 speed ports and a thousand speed ports. That's no good. Um, they all have to be the same speed. They have to be the same duplex setting. You know, you can't have four and full duplex and four and half duplex. You can typically only do eight ports in a channel. So like here they're telling you you can do up to 800 megabits per second or eight gigs, depending if you're doing gigabit ethernet. So what they're saying is each channel, so each switch, only allows eight ports to be added to a channel. Now you could create multiple channels, you know, each switch supports six channels, but each channel only supports up to eight ports. Does that make sense? Good. Now here, Cisco always gets confusing uh, when they say each Ether channel can consist of up to 16 blah blah blah. What they're talking about with 16 is eight on one end of the switch and eight on the other end of the other switch. So eight ports going into eight ports, so that would be 16. So you can see by the speed, I either have 100 megabit ports or I have gigabit ports. So both of those are eight. So I have eight ports on one end, eight on the other end. So make sure you're good with that. The ports have to be the same, they can't be mixed. The speed has to be the same, the duplex setting has to be the same, which is another reason that we don't, or I'm sorry, that we do set the duplex setting manually and don't let it set for auto. Remember, in the words of Jeremy, <laughs> we auto not do auto settings. 
Um, and that way you don't have any negotiation failures. The port will always be in a full duplex. All right, Cisco um, provides Ether Channel in two different flavors. The first one is PAGP, or Port Aggregation Protocol. Now this is Cisco proprietary, meaning if you run this, you have to have all Cisco switches. So that's very bad. Um, you know, HP Procurve and some other companies make some very nice switches. Um, I know, obviously, our school has moved to HP Procurve switches, a lot of other places, uh, especially in the, at the very small end of businesses, uh, up to medium. There's no real reason to buy Cisco because Cisco is enterprise level. You know, it's made for the big business. It's made for the heavy-duty stuff. If you're not doing that kind of work, you can get by with other stuff. So I digress. But with each different mode, you've got different settings. You remember when we talked about trunking and we talked about dynamic trunk protocol, how normally once you create a trunk, they're both in dynamic auto state. So both ports listen for some way to tell it to become a trunk. And if they're both in dynamic auto, they won't become a trunk. But if one is in something else, then they'll become a trunk. That's kind of how PAGP works and actually how all Ether Channel works here. If both if these switches, if both channels are turned on, they'll form a channel. If one of these is in desirable and one of these is in auto or desirable, they'll form. Otherwise, they will not form uh, the channel. Now, that's PAGP. Again, that's Cisco proprietary. We tend to stay away from that, you know, unless a customer is a diehard Cisco fan and their whole network is Cisco and they love Cisco and they buy stock in Cisco and blah, 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 blah. So here's what we typically like to use, LACP, Link Aggregation Control Protocol. This is, you know, IEEE standard, so all, all switches support this. And again, they give you, you know, if both are on, it'll form a channel. If, uh, if both are active or one's active and one's passive, they'll form a channel. Now, if everything else, it does not form the channel. So make sure you're aware of that. Uh, Ether channel never used to be on the CCNA, but on the new CCNA, obviously it's covered in the book, so I would imagine they're going to ask you some kind of question where they're going to show you two switches, and they're going to say, hey, switch one is on, and switch two is active. Well, you know, will they form the channel? So make sure you're aware of that if you're studying for the CCNA. Because uh, I know they used to do that for dynamic trunking protocol. Hey, this one's set for dynamic auto. This one's on desi des dynamic desirable. Will they form a trunk? All right, so the the big part, configuration. How do I configure this stuff? Well, again, they give you another warning. You know, the Ether channel must be supported. You know, obviously all the Cisco stuff supports Ether channel. Um, but if you buy somebody else's switch, make sure that Ether channel is supported. Speed and duplex must match. The VLANs must match. You know, if you're forming an Ether channel to make a trunk, which is typically what we do, you know, the allowed range of VLANs have to be the same. So again, they give you this graph, and they say, hey, you know, they're both gigabit, they're both full speed, they're both in VLAN 10, so that would form. Over here, they're both gigabit, uh, but this one's half duplex, this one's full, so the trunk or the channel would not form. So just be aware of those two rules, the speed of all the ports and the duplex setting of all the ports in the channel have to match. All right, so boom, this is all there is to configuration, one command, channel group, one, mode active. So once you activate the channel group, you have to tell it what mode it's going to be in. Now, because this says active, if I go back, ah, active is a setting for LACP. So it'll turn that channel active, where active is not a setting for PAGP. So the settings are different. You have auto and desirable over here, and you have active and passive. So if you set it for active or passive, it's going to be LACP. Yeah. All right, so interface range, fast Ethernet, 0, 1, space, dash, space, 2, enter. And now, so now both ports are activated, or both ports are selected. And then channel group, space, the number of your channel group, space, the mode, space, and then what mode you want it to be in. Active, um, passive, on, off. And then once the channel group is done, then you can just go to interface, port channel 1, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1, 2, and 20, and you're all set. So again, Ether channel, very easy, and it should be used everywhere. But I'm telling you, when you guys get out to the real world, you're going to see you got a 48-port switch, 
everybody's connected. There's typically like 40 to 42 users on at a time, and they got one little 100 megabit port that goes from one switch to another. So all 40 people are supposed to like share this 100 megabit port because they don't know how to set up Ether Channel. They didn't even know what it is. They didn't know it's there. So just be aware of that. All right, so again, to verify, you know, show interface port channel, and just make sure you put that dash in there. I always screw that up. Um, so show interface port channel, show ether channel summary, show ether channel port channel, or show interfaces ether channel. So a lot of different commands, they'll, they'll show you different things. Um, we typically use show interface port channel because that'll show you the general status um, of your port channel interfaces. So troubleshooting, you need to check the modes on both ends. Did the person set the, one of the modes up wrong? So obviously in this case, the, the channel is on. In this case over here, it's desirable. So if I go back to my chart, you know, one's on, one's desirable, it's not going to form. So obviously that one is running PAGP. All right, and don't forget, we talked about this in phase two, um, but people always forget about this. Remember, this is the pipe command. And the pipe command is the key right above the enter key. So I can do show run pipe begin with interface port channel. Or show run pipe, um, or I'm going to say show IP route spa or pipe uh, include interface up to show me just the up, uh, operational interfaces. So that's what the pipe does. The pipe allows you to put a different word to qualify to kind of filter your results. So in this case, show run pipe begin with interface port channel, and then you can just see the port channels together. Now again, don't forget if you're looking at this graph and you're not paying attention, this is S1 and this is S2. So they're, they put two different switch ports together. You're not going to see this on one switch. All right, that about wraps up that chapter. Again, not a whole lot involved there. Um, just make sure you understand that PAGP is the Cisco proprietary. LACP is the IEEE standard supporting by everybody. Don't forget the command to turn it on. There's only that one command. Um, all the show commands you know, use the word port channel typically, and then you got to put that dash in there. And you have to be, the ports have to be on the same speed and the same duplex setting. All right, other than that, if you have any questions about that, bring them up in class when we do the lab.